Hey kids, it's Mr. Flaw here, hope you're well. And uh, welcome to Great Missenden on this beautiful summer's day. I'm out nice and early this morning. Not often you get me up before nine o'clock, but uh, such a nice day. I could not wait to come out on this motorcycle. Today, I'm riding something that is pretty flipping special because this is a bike that started a genre of motorcycles, arguably. This is the bike that started the hyperbike craze in the noughties. Today, I'm riding another classic motorcycle and it's the Super Blackbird from Honda. Or, to give it its full title, it's the Honda CBR1100XX Super Blackbird. Let's take a little look at it before we ride it, shall we? Now, check this bike out. This is a 2005 model, so it's 17 years old, and I think it still looks utterly superb. I love the way that this... Uh, fairing's been designed on here. I just think it looks like an absolute brute. It's got a lot of um, a lot of fairing and a lot of plastics on this. It would be really easy to clean this bike and keep clean because all the engine and all the fiddly bits are well covered. I love the twin exhaust on here. A bit of chrome to clean it as well. Uh, they look absolutely brilliant. These are the original exhausts on here, the original Honda ones. They sound excellent as you'll hear in a minute. And uh, yeah, what a machine. So this bike uh, originally came out in 1997 as a carved model. Um, and it came out to, uh, well, it basically set up a new genre of motorcycle. And uh, this bike basically ended up spawning things like the legendary Suzuki Hayabusa, which uh, was designed to take this bike on. And there's some talk that Hay Hayabusa actually means, I think it's some sort of bird-eating falcon. Uh, and that's the idea behind the name, because uh, they thought it'd be a clever name to take on something like the Super Blackbird, a bird-eating falcon. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's a good story. But yeah, lovely looking machine even today. This particular one, nice and simple, uh, old school controls on it. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, you know, nothing complicated about this bike at all. It just looks like a proper solid motorcycle. One thing uh, I would so about it is it's quite large it's physically quite a big bike um but nonetheless it's no worse for it it's brill all right let's jump back on okay so we've established she's still a good looker 17 years on then is she still a good bike to ride well simple answer yes <laughs> unbelievable actually this particular motorcycle been lent to me by my channel sponsor the superbike factory it's a 2005 model as i say 17 years old and it's about 3,600 quid, something like that. And I have to say, for that money, you get an awful lot of motorcycle. And part of that awful lot of bike, a very important part, of course, is the engine. Here she is. The engine on this is an 1137cc inline four-cylinder beast derived from the Fireblade of the time. It's got twin balancer shafts that help make it uber smooth. And uh, apparently, to according to MCN, problems with these bikes are virtually non-existent, even at huge mileages, uh, according to the reviews that I've read. It puts out 153 brake horsepower at 9,500 RPM, um, although the figures do uh, that I've found do vary, so that's kind of ballpark. And the torque on this bike, 87 foot-pounds, 119 newton meters at 7250 rpm not only do you get that monstrous four-cylinder engine capable of something like 179 miles an hour but you get a bike that uh, is actually very comfortable and very practical to ride first thing that struck me when i jumped on the cbr 1100 super blackbird is its comfort i mean it looks like a sports bike i suppose you could argue its sort of mission is sports touring but of course it is the first hyperbike I like to think. But despite all that credential, it is a comfortable place to be. Compared to modern day sports bikes, I feel really pretty good on here. I'm used to riding my Panigale, which is a very uncomfortable sports bike. This thing in comparison, number one, feels an awful lot bigger. Bikes have just got so small in the last 10 years, it seems. So number one, it feels bigger. So if you're a bigger person, this bike would fit you absolutely fine. But also, it's just comfortable. I'm sitting, okay, I'm leant forward, and there is a little bit of weight on my wrist, but it's nowhere near as bad as my Panigale, for example. The seat on here is nice and padded and large. You can move around, so if you're a short fella like me, you can sit towards the front and almost sit upright, or if you're a bigger bloke, you can get yourself right back, and you can tuck down as well. So yeah, lots of options on the seat, lots of comfort. And here is that big padded seat. It's, uh, it's a, a lovely place to be. It is quite tall though, at 810 millimetres this bike. I'm only a medium sized fella at five foot eight, uh, but I can get my feet on the deck, but they are on the balls of the feet. But nonetheless, that seat is absolutely massive. As you can see, you can move around on it and it is a comfortable place to be. And then also adding to that comfort of the ride is this so silky smooth four cylinder engine. 
So you've got that sports bike thrill if you want it. One thing I would say about the bike is it does feel a heavy old beast. So big beasts like this don't come in lightweight. This one's 224 kilograms dry. But even despite its weight and size, it doesn't detract from its fun factor. Now I'm riding down here one of my favorite roads that I do bike tests on because it's a good comparative road. And it's one of my favorites because it's got lots of twists and turns, so it's good for handling, but also it's got a very bumpy surface. So it's excellent just to check the suspension. And the suspension on this, I can report, very, very smooth. Don't actually know much about the suspension on here. All I do know is it's got 120 mil of travel both on the front and back, and it doesn't appear to be particularly adjustable. Yeah, when you're riding it, this suspension feels, well, Tora smooth. It's more like my Honda Goldwing than it is my Ducati Panigale, put it that way. So it's not one of those bikes that's gonna rattle your teeth out. It just gives you a plush ride. Something else I very much like about this bike is its simplicity. Of course, when this bike came out 17 years ago, this particular one, they came out obviously before then, but this one, as I say, is the 2005 model with fuel injection. But what I like about it is, it is a nice simple machine. No riding modes to distract you. It could do with traction control and ABS, but they weren't kind of around then. But the cockpit on here, lovely and simple, that big RPM gauge in the middle, your speed on the right on an LCD, and on the left an LCD with all your bits of information, including a proper fuel gauge, a clock, temperature gauge, and your odometer. What more do you need? And your idiot lights, and the idiot lights on here look like they're out of a Spitfire or something. I absolutely love them. This one's actually got some aftermarket heated grips as well, which make it very handy. This would be a brilliant bike to buy as kind of a, well, it'd be a brilliant bike to buy as an all-rounder actually, but for me, somebody with lots of shiny bikes I'm fortunate enough to have, this would be a brilliant winter hack. At that price, very tempting. So I mean, I'm not scared on the mirrors. They're a bit weird when it comes to adjusting them. I can see out of them all right, and there's no big vibration, but they're just a bit strange when it comes to adjusting them. I can't really explain it, but they don't move as quite as you'd expect. Right, I'm coming up to a slightly faster bit of road here. I'm hoping I'm gonna get a clear bit of road so that I can actually overtake this Audi. And just have a little bit of a taste of what this bike is like at higher speeds. Okay, there's a van there and a turning. We'll just let those go. And then we'll go for it, nothing behind us. Right, half the turn, let's go. Oh my. This is turbine smooth and ballistic. <laughs> yeah, this is a quick machine, no doubt about that. If you want to go touring and cover continental miles in comfort and speed and pace, this is the bike to do it on. What an absolute corker. Right, nothing behind me for a little way. I'm just going to test these brakes now front after 17 years is still as sharp as you like. Nice and progressive, lots of feel there. Let's try the rear. Rear surprisingly good. In fact, I've got a feeling the, links on, the brakes on this are linked. Let's take a look at them. So yeah, look, uh, dual combined brake system. So they are in fact linked and you can see the sort of additional master cylinder here that sends a little bit of power back to the rear brake when you apply the front. On the front here, this has got three 10 mil discs and this is a three pot Nissan caliper. And on the rear here, you've got a 256 mil disc, and this looks like a three-pot caliper as well, which would explain why that back brake is so good. Whilst we're talking about the ride, let's just uh, have a little try the gearbox and the clutch. Clutch is quite hard to modern day standards, or quite stiff, I should say, but not terribly so. It's not Harley Davidson stiff, but it's not Triumph light, let's put it that way. Gearbox on it, since I've been riding the bike, no false neutrals, no difficulty finding neutral. Really nice classic Honda quality this. It just is a testament to what Honda can do on bikes because this is not a new vehicle is it, it's 17 years old. But I doubt it felt any different when it was brand new. It's a really nice machine this. And I know I say this on every classic review I do, but if I had the space, I would have this. Because this is properly a classic bike. It's comfortable, it's fast, it's iconic, it looks good. It's only three and a half grand. Unbelievable value for money. It just shows you again, you don't need to be spaffing out 20 grand to get the latest and greatest to have fun on a bike. This is a proper grim machine. Always the most important thing. 
when it comes to motorcycles is how they make you feel. This one makes you feel flipping good. Surprising actually on the handle, you don't have to muscle it around as much as you'd think. As I say, it is a big old bike with a fairly long wheelbase, but handling wise it's alright. When I mean, these sort of hyper bikes can be a bit scary when you look at the numbers, can't they? Brake horsepower's north of 150 bhp, speed's north of 175 miles an hour. You can, you, you know, you can think, oh hello, another biker, there's a Kawasaki man. Yeah, you can think that uh, these are going to be intimidating bikes to ride, but absolutely not. This is a pussycat riding around here, look at 56, around these lanes, absolutely fantastic. And the beauty of this is you could also take it on a track day and scare some modern sports bikes, I imagine, if you're a good enough rider. Also, you could take this to the continent and have an excellent touring holiday. Man, I need to find some more space. I think I might need a bike like this in my life. Yeah, gearbox is nice. Sounds good as well. Got that amazing four cylinder scream about it if you want it. Can't get over how comfortable this is. What a brilliant bike. I rode last year, or well it might have been the year before, the new Hayabusa. I have to say, I think I prefer this in every way. Not that the Hayabusa was a bad bike, I just prefer the looks of this. I, and I do like the fact that it's not cluttered with complicated electronics to get in the way of your riding enjoyment. Of course, you've got to ride carefully. Physics gets involved with no traction control, so got to take responsibility for yourself of course but so if you fancy yourself a Honda CBR 1100XX Super Blackbird a bit like this then you could do far worse than checking out Superbike Factory's website they're sponsors of the channel and uh, I'm thrilled that they're sponsors because they are the largest second-hand bike dealer in Europe they have over 2,000 motorcycles in stock at any one time you go onto their website and you just put in the bike that you're interested in and more often than not They've got a handful of that very bike. Anything up to sort of 20 years old you can find on there. Very easy website to use and loads of bikes to choose from. Recommend you go and check that out. I'll put a link below so you can go and check out Superbike Factory. And see if they've got uh, any of these Super Blackbirds in stock. Let's nip out here quick in the gap. Now I'm actually recording this in early August so by the time you see this video this particular bike may have gone. In fact I may have bought it myself. <laughs> But when I looked, there were three Super Blackbirds on the site. So uh, if there aren't any there at the moment, give it a week or two, something's bound to crop up. So now I've got these uh, double white lines and this line of traffic, it looks like my fun is uh, curtailed for the time being. So that's uh, just about it for this video, I hope you enjoyed that, if it's the first time you've been to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, it'd be great to have you along, I don't just do bike reviews here on the Mr. Flyer, and not just classic bikes either, I do the odd new bikes that interest me as well. I do a monthly bike news feature, trips and tours at home and abroad, things in the garage about how to look after your bike, the odd live stream, basically anything and everything to do with motorcycles. I'll try and cover it here on the Mr. Flyer. It'll be great to have you along. But for now, that's it. I'm going to enjoy riding this bike for the next couple of hours. This bike has to go back tomorrow, so I've only got it for a short time, but I'm absolutely loving it. I hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to the Super Blackbird 2, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. Flyer. Cheerio. And this is the view of the cockpit when well, we haven't got a flipping great camera pointing at me. Sorry about that, I didn't realise quite how much that camera intruded on your view. I hope it didn't spoil your enjoyment too much.